Well, welcome to Cowboys for Jesus on a Sunday morning. Is it going to be a good day? It's going to be a good day. I feel it coming on. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, cowboys and cowgirls, inside and outside. Welcome to Cowboys for Jesus. I hate to tell you this, but I think it's going to be a great day today. Amen. 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 Are y'all looking forward to a good day? All right. Well, you folks that are out there in your homes watching us on TV, we welcome you and we're glad you're out there and we'd love for you to come and join us one day when you feel like it. So anyway, we're going to pray that God will bless you where you are today, and it's going to bless all of us. The Holy Spirit's going to be in charge. Amen? Well, let's ask him to do just that, okay? Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you it's the day that you've made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it, Father. Lord, I ask you to pour your Holy Spirit out. I ask you to anoint the preacher this morning, and I ask you to anoint the, the audience to open their ears and their eyes and their hearts father we want we want to hear your word today and we want to want it to change our lives father and draw us closer to you and let us know how much more you love us and and, and teach us to love you more ourselves father we ask it all in the name of jesus amen, amen. well i think one of the good ways to start off today gonna to be a good day Let's sing about the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the bounty, cleansed by his blood. Join us with Jesus as we travel the sky. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. Say, brother and sister, round here. 
outgive God. I know that that's one thing for sure. I mean, He gave the ultimate gift when He gave His Son for us and went through what He did. And we just thank you, Father, for that. We thank you for your Son, Jesus, and we thank you for the part that He plays in our lives. Good morning, everybody, and we're just going to you know, see if we can stir up the heart of God.
Cause you're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul. His home like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your home. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. So still so we'll sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forever bless the Lord all my soul oh, my soul his holy sing like never be
is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Is the Lord God
when darkness seems to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the Christ of cornerstone, the weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. He is I'm not sure who picked the music today, but uh, they must have known what I was going to preach about. And uh, we try to give the Holy Spirit an opportunity. It's not supposed to be a one-man show. And the Bible says that one can bring a song, one can bring a, a word, and, and another can bring whatever God wants to say. So does anybody have a word from God that uh, is for today, for the service? If you come forward. Bill tried to preach half of my sermon this morning at Bible study. <laughs> you know, we, we're starting a new year, and God prompted this scripture to me, Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. Do you know the plans that God has for you? That's the thing we're supposed to do is ask God what we're supposed to be doing. You know, and, and as we said, there's plenty of stuff that we need to do in this church. We need more singers. We need people working in the various areas. Ask God what it is that you're supposed to be doing this year. Because God can't work it if you, unless you're willing to work with him. Um, and he says, you have not because you ask not or you ask amiss. So talk to God and ask him, what am I supposed to be doing this year? Because we got a whole new year. And it's going to be an interesting year for sure. You can go ahead and preach the rest of my sermon if you want to. <laughs> Anybody else have a word? I was just telling Pastor, this is not my testimony, but it's one of a sister among us that, uh, and I just want to share it because it blessed me so much. She had a wreck. <clears throat> And the car was damaged significantly. And so while um, she met with the other driver, there was a lot of conversation and, and they were talking. And she said, after a, a short while, she said, do you know Jesus? <laughs> and he said, no. She led him to the Lord. God can use anything. Praise the Lord. I've always said if you're if you're up for it, he'll put somebody in front of you that you have to talk to. You have to, to lead them to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Well, it's going to be a good day. I believe I'm excited. So you got some more songs? All right. Anybody feels led, they can come up to the 
altar here and kneel and do some business with God and get ready to receive. Amen. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. We love you, adore you, we bow down before you. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. Son of God, we magnify you. Son of God, we magnify you. You saved us from sin, gave a new life within. Son of God, we magnify you. Holy Spirit, what a comfort you are. Holy Spirit, what a comfort you are. You lead us, you guide us, you dwell right inside us. Holy Spirit, what a comfort you are. Let's sing it again. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. We love you adore you we bow down before you heavenly father we appreciate you son of god we magnify you son of god we magnify you you saved us from sin gave a new life within Son of God we magnify you Holy Spirit what a comfort you are Holy Spirit what a comfort you are you lead us you guide us you dwell right inside us Holy Spirit, what a comfort you are. Oh, you lead us, you guide us, you dwell right inside us. Holy Spirit, what a comfort you are. Thank you. Good morning again. Did I do that? Uh, whoever, whoever put that music together knew what I was preaching. The boy heard God, huh? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm excited this morning. And, uh, you know, Brother Jimmy did some, some teaching for, you know, young preachers and stuff and I sat in on a few of them, and a lot of what he did was over my head, but I did learn one thing from him. He said, just tell them what you're going to do, and then do it. And so that's what I'm doing today. Amen? Amen. And before I do that, I need to make a full disclosure just in, 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 so, so that you know everything, okay? Uh, this message may sound familiar to some of you because I preached it about a year and a half ago. Uh, and God brought it to my mind, and as I reflected on it, 
uh, and considered the times we're living in, several things occurred to me. Uh, these are perilous times, and God only knows what's in store for us. But whatever the future holds, I believe we should make sure that we're living by faith and not by sight and depending totally and wholly on God, our Creator. Because He knows what's going on. Number two, when I preached it before, the goal was to get more in touch with uh, truly worshiping God, just as the Scripture admonishes us to do, and let God know that we love Him and adore Him and that we know He's worthy to be praised and honored and worshiped. Uh, number three, we have some new people since then. We've had quite a few come in here in the last few months, thanks to COVID, I think. But uh, anyway, I, I thought it'd be good to keep us all on the same page. And, uh, and some of us need to, to review and remind ourselves that, that we need to refocus and review our hearts and show God a lot more enthusiasm than we, than we do sometimes and show him we are really excited about who he is and what he does for us and serving him and loving him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And yes, there will be a part two. We will review the true worship of God, the, of the universe, and see what it is, what it looks like, and what it sounds like. So I hope you'll come back next Sunday if I don't scare you off today. Okay? Does anybody want to leave now? Uh, the title of this message is, uh, How Great Is Our God? And the subtitle... And I, 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 I want to sing it, but <clears throat> my, more, my, my voice is kind of, kind of hoarse. Uh, there's a song that's been sung by a lot of people. To know, know, know him is to love, love, love him. And I do. They, well, they, it's not a song about Jesus. I think it's a secular song. But every time I hear it, I think, man, that ought, we ought to convert that into being about Jesus. And uh, so... so I know, know, know him, and I love, love, love him, and I do. The question is, do you? As much as you should, as much as he wants you to. And, and that's what this sermon's about today. Um, some of us may not be aware that our opinions of God drastically affect our relationship with God and our ability to trust him and to love him and to submit our life to him which in turn affects our ability to relate to him and believe that he loves us and will answer our prayers and intervene in our situations and in our life, such as healing, praying, receiving from him. Does anybody besides me have a little trouble with any of those and believing them firmly? Oh, well, I'm glad a couple of you did. I, shoot, I might have to go home if you didn't. Uh, anyway... So how many have an opinion about God? I mean, you know, we get opinions from all different kinds of places, and, and the ones that we got early in life may have come from, from people that didn't really know the truth, and, you know, there's just a lot of sayings around. So uh, how many of you know that, that some of the things that, that of your opinions about God uh, may not be exactly true? I'm glad. Uh, how many can admit that, that some of your opinions might be not totally right? Good, good. How many of you are open-minded enough to listen and when you see something that, that uh, disagrees with what you've believed all your life, do you pull that out and throw it away and put God's word in where that was with the truth? That's what we're supposed to do. But it can be really hard if you've accepted something as true from somebody else or from some other source. Once you accept it as true, it can blind you to the scriptures. And I've had experience with that over a couple of issues way, way back in my life. A preacher one time uh, that I was sitting under that I really loved, he said, you know, if there's anything bad comes against you, it's not from God. And at that time in my life, I thought God punished us still, you know. And I thought, I really loved him. And I thought, well, you know, he'll get that sooner or later. You know, he'll, he'll understand that God does, you know, do things with us. And it was about 10 years later 
before we started the church when I was really studying, and I ran across that scripture in Isaiah, and it said, uh, God says, if anything bad comes against you, it's not from me. In my loving kindness, you don't have to be put up with my anger. You know, it'll never be there. If anything bad comes against you, it's from somewhere else. How many of you know that? But that taught me a lesson that we have to be very, very careful when we read the scriptures to be sure that, that what we're, see, we, we're, we're getting is the truth. And we rightly divide that truth. Amen. So uh, it also affects our image of ourselves if we have mistaken things about God. Uh, whether we're, It can determine whether we're confident, secure, insecure, fearful, whether we live in the spirit or whether we live in the world. Uh, it's very important that we get the scriptures right and that we get them in us. Amen. So I believe that God uh, today wants to paint a picture in our minds that will help us to know and understand God and his motives so you can love and appreciate him more and be more confident that he loves you and that he will always act right to you and he will keep all of his promises concerning you. And if you believe he'll keep all the promises concerning you, that ought to drive you to the scriptures to see what all the promises are. Amen? So are you aware that our opinions of God is tied directly to the scriptures and our opinion of the scriptures? So that's a good place to start, huh? Uh, so are y'all okay with looking in the mirror of the word to check out your thoughts and opinions and... and uh, that are not cons consistent with the scriptures? Anybody don't want to look in the mirror? Or do you want to grow? Okay, that's good. 2 Timothy 3.16. A lot of these are familiar scriptures, but, uh, but they all fit together, and I think in a unique way. 2 Timothy 3.16, verse 4. Uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, and, and most of all, for instruction in righteousness. And it took me a long time to figure out how important that instruction in righteousness is. Because if we don't know that God makes us righteous, it causes us a lot of grief in our life and a lot of guilt and shame and a whole lot of different things. So that's one thing we have to get straight. 2 Timothy 2.15. And this is a good one. Be diligent. How many of you know what diligent means? It means work at it. Take time with it. Do, get, be, be thorough with it, okay? Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And, and I know I've mentioned it a whole bunch of times, but you've got to know what rightly dividing is. Rightly dividing means that if one scripture seems to conflict with another scripture, Something's wrong with your understanding of one of them because Scripture does not contradict itself. God is, is God, and God can cause everything to fit together just perfectly, and he's done that in the Scriptures. So we have, to, we have to measure Scripture against Scripture. And if you get three Scriptures that, that agree, then that's a truth, and you can take it home with you. Amen? Because the Scripture says, Let a thing be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And two or three witnesses can be three different scriptures in the Bible that say the same thing. And it's always my opinion that the more time something's in the Bible, the more important it is. So Hebrews 4, verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. How many of you need you, you need to get you need to get the truth in you, and then you need to confess it, and you need to hold fast to that confession? Uh, I started a long time ago saying just positive things, and and uh, everybody'd say, "How are you doing?" I'd say, "Fantastic," and and the more I said it, the more fantastic I felt. Uh, but but I, I noticed one time. Uh, I kind of got a little down about something, and somebody asked me how I was doing, and I said, oh, pretty good. And they said, what? And I realized that I wasn't holding fast to that confession. 
But now, if you ask me how I'm doing, I'm going to say fantastic. And, and it makes me feel more fantastic. And sometimes I say, well, why do you keep asking me? But anyway, um, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Do you realize that Jesus went through and experienced every single temptation that you possibly could be uh, have thrown at you? We have an enemy that walks around trying to discourage us. Uh, let us therefore boldly, because we have this, this uh, high priest that, that, that was tempted in all points like us, therefore let us come boldly to the throne of, throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And when is that time of need? Is it sometimes when we're being tempted or when we've drifted away from God? And, and one of the reasons that, that this scripture is so important um, Jesus was tempted and, and he's, if we don't understand that, that, that Jesus is not going to condemn us for anything, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If we don't know that he loves us and that he overlooks our sin, and if we don't know that, that he's there holding his arms out like this, no matter what we've done, you can be dirty in the mud, falling down, anything, whatever. And, and, and if you don't know those things, you know what you do? You run away and hide. You don't, wanna, you don't want him to know you did it, and you go and you hide from him. But if you know him, and you know how much he loves you, and how much he cares for you, and that he died for your sins, and that your sins don't affect him anymore, then, then he's waiting with open arms, and you can just go jump in his lap and say, God, thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you for dying for me. That's what it's all about is getting to know him so that you know that he loves you and so that you know how much how he feels about you and that makes you love him more. And that's what today's all about, okay? Ephesians 3:14 For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know the scripture says that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So why don't we just go ahead and bow our knee now and say, God, you're it. You're all there is, and I'll never leave you or forsake you, just like you'll never leave me or forsake me. But we should do it now and get it over with. Anyway, it goes on. It says, uh, for the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Now, if something's going to be to the riches of his glory, how are you going to enjoy it if you don't know what the riches of his glory are? See, you've got to study the Bible to come up with these things to know how to react when, when things go wrong. Uh, where did it go? Uh, I lost it. From the whole family in heaven that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. How many of you know that it's your inner man, your spirit, where you need to be strengthened and where you need to be hearing God and where you need to be having God's word? And why? Why would you want to do that? That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height to know the love of Christ, Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. What do you think happens when you're filled with all the fullness of God? You've got one great life going on, and you're sharing it with whoever will let you, and you're walking in in joy and peace and faith, and you're at one with yourself and your wife and with those around you. Amen. That's what happens. But, but are you noticing how many times it talks about knowing? You've got to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Uh, and, and you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And verse 20 says, Now to him who is able... 
to do poorly won't do much for you. Oh, that's not what it says? Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or even think, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations. For how long? Forever and ever. Amen. Are y'all awake yet? Okay. You, you want to quit? Okay, that's good because I'm not. Isaiah 30, 43, 25. Wake up and listen, okay? I, this is God speaking and it's in the Old Testament. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgression. For my own sake, he says, and I will not remember your sins. Now, did, did you catch that for my own sake? That's God. God said, I'm doing that for my own sake. What does that mean? Why is he doing it for his own sake? He wants a relationship with you. And he can't have a relationship with you if you got sin all over you or if you're in sin or if you're not saved and you're not righteous. That's why he made provision for us to be free of our sin. He took all of our sin on him on the cross. And, and once we come to him, and accept that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Our life is hidden in God with Christ. And there's nothing you or anybody else can do about it. Amen. Amen. It's permanent once you truly with all your heart surrender to him. But if you don't know that, what good does it do you? That's why he said it. He said, even I, I am he who blots out your transgression for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. That's really weak. That's something, that's something to shout about, people. Okay. Proverbs 25, verse 2. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. But the glory of kings is to search out a matter. And, you know, we're, you know, kings under Jesus, just like he is, so... Are you searching? And if so, how diligently are you searching? If you don't take an interest in the word and, and take the time to, to know God's promises for you and to know who he is and how much he loves you, you just, you just can't get all the enjoyment out of your Christianity, out of your relationship with him that, that's there, that he wants you to have. That's what he wants you to have. That's why he said, for my own sake. He didn't do it for us. I mean, he did, but, but he had a motive, and the motive was he wanted a family, and he wanted to have a relationship with us, and he made it happen. Amen? Uh, I don't guess I have to read this one since, since somebody already read it. Ver, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace... Not of evil. How can it not be of evil? Because he said, you know, he doesn't remember anything that, that we do that's evil. And evil won't come near us. Uh, my thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future. What kind of future do you think he wants to give you? You think he wants you to be in trouble all the time or be cross with people all the time or be fussing or getting fussed at? He wants to give you a future and a hope. And, and why does he want to do that? Because he says, then you will call upon me and you will go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Do I need to read that again? When you search with me for me with all your heart. And verse 14 says, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. How many of you are captive from one thing or another? At what times, we're all captive in some way or other. Hopefully we grow to where it's, it's very seldom and very few and far between. But we're human. And that's why God had to make us righteous forever. 
because he wanted to have a relationship with us full time, all time, any time every day that, that he wanted to talk to us or we wanted to talk to him. That's why he did it that way. For his own sake. That really ministers to me when he says, for my own sake. If you don't believe God loves you, then why would he go to all that trouble if he didn't love you for his own sake? Amen? Okay. Now, this scripture that I just read, Jeremiah 29, I'm pretty sure that that was applying to the, the Jewish people because they were really in captivity. I think they were slaves at the time that was, was meant for. But uh, now, don't forget why the scriptures are written, okay? Okay. We just read it a while ago. You may not remember it, so I'm going to repeat it. Ephesians 3.19. It, uh, it says, To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's why God wrote this. Are you getting it? Romans uh, 4 verse 20. Uh, Abraham uh, was, was witnessing and, uh, and, and God was talking to him. In verse 20, uh, Romans 4 verse 20, uh, it says... He did not, it's talking about Abraham. He said, he did not waver at the promises of God. You remember what God, his promises were, you know, that when he was old, he was going to have another kid and that kid was going to be more than the stars of the, of the sky and, and more than, than the dust, the sand of, of, in, on the beach, you know. And, and so he did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and, and listen to this part. Wake up. Being fully convinced that he had, had that he had prom what he had promised, he was able to perform. Yeah. Do y'all believe that what God promises you, he's able to perform? Yeah. If he wasn't able to perform it, he wouldn't promise it. Amen? Yeah. So then why don't we get all of his promises? We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh being fully convinced that what he had promised he was able to perform, and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. And that's how we get righteousness, is by faith, by believing what God says, by believing that Jesus died for our sins, and that they are no more as far as he's concerned. Amen? That doesn't mean we'll never mess up again, but it means he did it for his own good, so that we could have that continuous relationship with him. Uh, now, it was not written for his sake alone, but it, that, it was, that righteousness was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord up from the dead. How many of you believe that Jesus is alive? How many of you believe that Jesus made you righteous and that there's nothing the devil can do about it? Amen? Amen. Ephesians 4. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you. This is Paul. And he's talking straight to you and me. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. How many of you know that you have a call on your life somewhere? I don't care how old you are, how young you are, you got a call on your life. And, and I can tell you from my own experience that when you answer that call and you surrender to that call, that's when life begins. It did for me, for sure. <clears throat> uh, calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness and with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. See, that's what happens to you when you get full of God. This is the way you act, okay? Uh, there's only one body, one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is, who is above all and through all and in you all. He's in you right now this moment. Do we, do we walk around all the time knowing that God lives inside of us? He's there all the time. And He wants you to be aware of it. And he wants you to think about Him 
all the time. You know, it says pray without ceasing, and I, I think that means you just got you just got God on your mind with everything you do, and you're checking in with Him before you make decisions, and you're you're asking Him, Lord, what 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 do you want me to do today, Lord? Is there somebody out there that that I can witness to today? Show them to me. Help me to see them. That's what we need to be doing. Amen. If y'all all did that, we'd have to add on to the building again. Amen. Y'all want to do that? Yeah. All right. Uh, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. And if you're wondering why I repeat a lot of this stuff, it's because repetition breeds remembering. Amen? And, that, and I'm just doing it for me, you know, for my sake. I want to be sure I remember it and live by it. So i got a question for you. How in all of creation did the body of Christ get so messed up, so splintered, so divided into so many parts? Uh, I know there's a real devil out there and, and that he's prowling around like a roaring lion seeking to devour us. Uh, and, and he's defeating Christians everywhere, right and left. And how can that be? with such a great, wonderful, loving God that, that deliberately brought us into his family to fellowship with us. How can that be? How can people miss that? Does anybody want to know the answer? Are you sure you want to know the answer? Well, I'll tell you. It's because you're lazy. And it's because I'm lazy. It's because we're lazy. And, and most people, a lot of people, don't take enough time and energy to get to know God and his character and his nature and to know and understand his ways. If you, don't, if you don't know these things, you can't appreciate him the way he wants to be appreciated and you can't enjoy the things he wants you to enjoy. You've got to do this if you want to have the best possible life. Uh, but you've got to get to know his character, his nature, understand his ways. And, 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 and the other, the other, another reason is we don't seek him first, you know. And you all hear me say it all the time. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he'll add everything else to you. Y'all, what part of that don't we get? Hello? I know I'm preaching to the choir with some of you, but, but we can all improve on it. I don't care how, where we are in it right now. Everybody can get a little bit better than they are. Is that right or wrong? Uh, many of us choose to live by our emotions or make important decisions with our feelings and, and we can't sort out wants from needs and necessities and we don't trust him to provide the things that we need or consult him with our decisions. Those are all reasons that this body of his is so divided and so splintered and that's a lot of why we're in the, the situation we're in in this world right now. And uh, and And... There's a lot of people out there that didn't get witness to because some of us were right here. Amen? So, okay. Uh, Colossians 1, 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His, of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. How would you like to be there? Paul prayed for that for you a long time ago. He prayed it for us. I'm going to read it again. That you may be filled with, all, with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, Increasing in the knowledge of God. How many times is that in here? And why don't we get it? And why don't we just dig it out so that we got more knowledge about him, and more knowledge of him, and more of his knowledge, and more of his wisdom. Uh, increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints in the light. Verse 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. And he conveyed us into the kingdom 
of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him, all things, including you, were created that are in heaven or that are on earth, visible or invisible, thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created, including you, through him and for him. He created you for himself. Do we get that? Does it make you understand his love for you more? It should. He is before all things. And in him all things consist. He is the head of the body of the church. Who is the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. That in all things he may have preeminence. Now can I, can I paraphrase that preeminence for you? It means to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And, and he promises that he will add everything else to you when you do that. But it's pretty hard to, to seek first the kingdom of God in everything. Have any of you ever discovered that? How many of you have tried it? Well, I recommend you try some more. And just everything you do, check it out. Am I seeking God first in this? Am I seeking God first in this? Am I seeking God first in this? Or am I just doing what I want to do and am I just lollygagging around? We can get a lot farther in life if we want to. Amen? Oh. That he may have preeminence. Second Peter, verse 1. Here it comes again. Y'all may get tired of hearing it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And his divine power has given to us all things pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Did you get that? I hope somebody's getting it. Because I love it. I've had more fun studying this and getting ready to preach this than I have in a long time. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 2.10 You are witnesses and God also how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behave ourselves among you who believe. That's Paul talking about when he was ministering to them. He said, as you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged uh, every, every one of you as a father does his own children, that you walk worthy of the God who called you into his own kingdom and glory. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as in the truth, the word of God. And that's what I'm hoping today, that you're not hearing my voice, that you're hearing God's voice. And you're understanding that it's God's word and it's for us and for you in particular. But it is truth, it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. And if you believe, you'll be doing these things we're talking about. And, if we, and, and we know that faith or believing comes by hearing, and hearing comes by watching TV. <laughs> hearing comes by the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the Word of God. We all know that, but how many times do we forget it? Psalms 3, 30, Psalms 34, verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Wouldn't that be fun? I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to me and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. The poor cried out and the Lord heard him 
and saved him out of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and to see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. That ought to help convince you that it's all up to you. Amen? God's done his part and he's there for us and he wants desperately to have a relationship with each and every one of us. And he wants it to be an intimate relationship. The conversation goes on all day uh, from him to us and from us to him. That's what he wants. And that's, that's what will turn this world around. That's what will turn this country around. If enough of us get there and get really serious about that and become Christian Jesus-loving fanatics, then, then the world will change. Amen. Amen. Psalms 29, verse 1. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the, glory, unto the Lord glory due his name. You know, I don't know if it's possible to give him all the glory that's due his name. Not from us humans. But we can try, can't we? We can try harder, and <clears throat> uh, if y'all can lose some inhibitions before next week, we're going to try doing some of that and, and learning how to worship him with a little more enthusiasm and excitement. And if that offends you, I'm sorry, but that's what he wants. And if we know him well enough and we love him well enough, we'll want to give it to him. Yes, Given to the Lord. To his, to his name. Worship the holy beauty of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. His name shall endure forever. This is Psalm 72. Verse 17. His name shall endure forever. His name shall continue as long as the sun. And men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. I guess that means that we're going to be around a little while. He's, it, it may not be quite the end of the earth yet because all of the nations aren't blessed yet. Does that give you some hope that maybe we're going to be around a little longer? There's a lot of people out there that think we're not. Verse 18 says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who only does wondrous things. I'll say it again. Who only does wondrous things. You know, I looked at that and I said, well, you know, does that mean he only does wondrous things? But, but it means he's the only one that can do worse, worse, wondrous things all the time. Either way, I like it. Amen. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Can we fill our part of the world with his glory? I think we need to start working on it and working on it and working on it and praying for each other and encouraging each other and, and letting him know how much we love him and appreciate him. I think we've fallen way short on that. Romans 4, 3. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. And you believed God and it was accounted to you as righteousness. And I believed God and I know I'm righteous whether you think it or not. Amen. It makes no difference to me what you think because I know what God thinks and what God says. And I'm righteous. Amen. And you're righteous. Let me hear you say, I'm righteous. I'm righteous. Okay, one more time. I'm righteous. All right, now don't ever forget it. And thank him for it every day. Amen? Romans 4, verse 3. I thought I just read that. How about Romans 4, verse 23? Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us, all of us, 
It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. If he can raise Jesus from the dead, he can make you righteous. And the only reason he can make you righteous is because Jesus died and rose again. And in the process, he shed his blood that paid for every bit of your sin forever. Amen. 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 Romans 15, verse 4. Whatever things were written before were written for our learning. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. I hope some of us got more hope today than we had when we came in here. Because that's what it says. For, for whatever things were written before were written for you, for your learning, that you, through the patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope. 1 Corinthians 10, uh, verse 11. Now all these things happened to them as examples. And they were written for your admonition, for our admonition, upon whom the end of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. Now you've got to know this stuff, and you've got to believe it, and you've got to live on it, and you've got to live with it, but... If you let it make you proud and you think you're somebody because of what Jesus is doing through you, then you better take heed because you could fall. We have to appreciate and love and be humble and do what he says and listen to him and worship him and praise him. and let him. Know. We need some excitement about God, folks. I think that's one thing that's missing at Cowboys for Jesus is we don't have enough excitement about him. Amen? Romans 13, verse 12. I thought this was an appropriate close. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, how many of you know that, that the night's far spent and the day is at hand, especially for our country? So, since that's the case, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, flesh to fulfill its lust. Amen. Did you get anything out of that? Uh, Wayne, you got a, where you at? You got a, a little strumming you could do with a little song and while we meditate a few minutes and give people a chance to come to the altar and, and uh, make a commitment to God if they so choose. Just make it soft and light. Thank you all for letting me preach that. I enjoyed studying it and reviewing it. And I enjoyed bringing it. And it did a work inside of me. I, I knew it all, but I needed it refreshed. And I needed it to, to come to the surface. And I think the reason is because we all need it. Amen? So I'm giving you a chance this morning to just take a few minutes and, and just talk to God. If, you're, if you realize that we've fallen short, let him know that. You don't have to ask him to forgive you. You just have to make a commitment to him and, and tell him to help you to, to stay close to it and to, to keep it in the front foot of, of your mind and that you want to change and you want to love him more now that you know how much he loves you. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to spend a little time up here on my knees, and if y'all would like to, you're welcome to join me. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. We love 
love you, adore you, we bow down before you, Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. O Son of God, we magnify you. Son of God, we magnify you. You saved us from sin and gave a new life within. Son of God, we magnify you. This Holy Spirit, what a comfort you are. Holy Spirit, what a comfort you are. You lead us, you guide us, you dwell right inside us. Holy Spirit, what a comfort you Saved us from sin, gave a new life within the Son of God. Stick this in our brain and and hold it there. Help us to to make it a habit to remember these scriptures and to review these scriptures. And uh, if anybody wants them, well, you can get on on the internet and watch it again if you want to to review or if you want a copy of the scriptures, I can print them up and send them to you if you want to put them where you can review them periodically. Just give me an email and I'll send it out to you. Or I'll bring some next. Any of you want to have a copy where you can look at it? I'll bring some next week. How many of you going to come next week prepared to get rid of some inhibitions and really worship God with some enthusiasm? I believe it has to happen. And there may be some that can't handle it if we get a little rowdy, but but God loves it, amen? So I think we have to do what God wants, and the rest of us will just have to make our choices. And I want to pray for us all. Father, I thank you for this word. And I'm selfish, Father. I thank you because it affected me in a positive way. And I ask, Father, that you would open up other hearts. And you would give us a heart to really worship you. And really love you day in and day out without without missing a beat, Father. Just that we get so close to you that we're all about you. And I don't mind being called a religious fanatic at all or a Jesus freak, Father. That's what I want to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for...
counseling and encouraging it along so much. So, how do you know when you've been to a cowboy church? When he's having trouble talking. <laughs> Y'all come back now, you hear? Please come back.